I've folded over a bunch of pages. It was super helpful. And by the end of it, um, you really end up appreciating your anxiety. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help you out. Hello and welcome back to the third video in the stress video series. If you haven't seen the others then they will be linked in the description below but make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the little bell beside it so that you don't miss out on any others. My name is Madison Don't and I am a science graduate, avid researcher, biology teacher and naturopathy student. Today we're going to be discussing the link between stress and anxiety. So let's start by going over the difference between the two. So stress is in response to a trigger and it's often short term, whereas anxiety is continuous and it's often a negative bias of normal events, such as overthinking a perfectly good conversation with someone, worrying that you said something wrong. Anxiety causes stress and stress and worry bring on a sympathetic state that only heightens the nervous system, thus bringing on more anxiety. The sympathetic state I actually went over in my last two videos, but basically it's when your body enters that fight or flight state and therefore your thoughts are overactive and your mind is racing really quickly. So if something is trying to kill you or trying to eat you, then you need to be able to think fast and think of all possible escape options, weapon options and all of that stuff. So it's actually an advantage and it's your body's way of trying to keep you safe. Technically, your brain gets more intelligent and your thoughts get more efficient. So this is similar to how adrenaline can help mothers lift cars off their children and all that crazy stuff. So when you are under threat, it's amazing what your body can do. Now, the issue with anxiety is that you are constantly in this state. So your brain is always switched on. It's always overthinking all possible options and all scenarios. And basically your brain doesn't really know what to do with itself because it overthinks even when you are not in danger. If it isn't obvious already, or if you haven't heard me talk about it on my Instagram, I do personally suffer from anxiety and I've really found that it helps to read a lot of books about it and really educate yourself about how your brain is working. Therefore, you understand it rather than just fall victim to it. One book that I found to be really good on anxiety is the book by Sarah Wilson, and it's called uh, First We Make the Beast Beautiful. So by the end of this book, you learn to take advantage and see the bright side of your anxiety and how it can actually help you in everyday life. But it also explains to you how not to fall victim to anxiety and how to know when it is helpful and when it is not being very helpful. One point that I do want to make about this book, though, if you do go out and buy it, is that in the first couple of chapters she talks about her personal experience with mental health um, and I just found that the way she wrote it um, made it sound like it's inevitable that if you have anxiety you're also going to suffer with all those other disorders um, so it was a little bit I don't know a little bit tense um, but I kept reading and you can see maybe I've uh, folded over a bunch of pages. It was super helpful. And by the end of it, um, you really end up appreciating your anxiety. Um, so yeah, definitely have a read, but don't think if you're just reading through the first couple of chapters, um, that you're bound to get like bipolar disorder and all those other things, um, or that you're going to have suicidal tendencies, um, if you've never had them before. Um, so yeah, I've struggled with anxiety. I've struggled with depression at times. Um, but I've never, I've, I've been very fortunate. I've never had suicidal tendencies. Um, and so if you're reading this book, just don't think that her story is your story. Just take it as, um, kind of acknowledge it and take interest in it and then read through her tips on how she learnt to, um, be one with her anxiety, but don't think that it's, inevitable and you're going to get all of those other things as well. Another thing that I've really found helps my anxiety and also my moments of stress is also breathing. And I know that it has been talked about a lot and it's kind of cliche, but it really does work. Um, but you have to do it properly. You can't just sit there and 
breathe. I found that it's best if you breathe in for four and then you just pause at the top and then you breathe out for six. So it really helps if you make the outwards breath uh, a little bit longer because that's when you're kind of releasing all the tension and all the thoughts. And if you count with the breath, then it means that it takes your mind off whatever you were overanalyzing and it kind of brings you back to the present. So that's what I found to be super helpful. There's a bunch of other things as well, but I will be doing a video on that next week. Let's just try it so that you know what I mean. So we're gonna breathe in for four, hold, and then breathe out. Because I can't talk while I'm like mid breath, I'm just gonna use my hands. So we're gonna breathe in. Like that. And if you do that, um, I've just heard on a podcast that if you do that nine times, then it has scientifically been proven to reduce stress and relieve all those symptoms and bring you back into that parasympathetic state. So I recommend that you try that one and then make sure that you subscribe and check back next week for all of my other tips. If you enjoyed this video, then like it below and let me know in the comments and also head over and join my Instagram community. I'm also up for a private message in the DMs if you want to chat about your anxiety, your acne or anything else that you might be going through. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this video helped you to understand your anxiety a little bit better and I can't wait to see you back here next week. I can help you out. I can help you